everybody, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to take a look at a tableau building game by Mayday Games, and this is called Viceroy. Now, in this game, each player is going to be buying cards at an auction. Uh, they're going to be trying to play those cards out into a pyramid. Uh, it's not really a tech tree, but it's a pyramid of abilities that you'll be building out, and the higher you place a card, uh, the better the ability may be for you. Now you'll be doing this by getting gems uh, and spending those gems in order to buy those cards. So uh, real quick, why don't we take a look at what you get inside of this box with a note that some of these will be uh, upgraded components. Uh, we'll see how the game plays and we'll come back at the end and get my opinions on Viceroy. So here you can see the components for Viceroy all set up. Basically what we're looking at is each player will have their own play area with one of these little sheets that guards their play area. I'm going to take this out, but note that you have a little thing to block what you have hidden behind your own play board. Uh, in addition, each player is going to start the game with four cards. Uh, they're going to choose one of these cards from their hand to play out as the start of their pyramid. Uh, basically it's going to be the first card in the base of their pyramid, and they would do this based on the stats on the card. Uh, first card uh, you'll see on cards each have a little circle in the corner or at least part of a circle blue here yellow here yellow there or it could be yellow yellow red for half the circle there or green yellow yellow whatever it is uh, when you put three cards together like this they will make up a circle uh, be it all one color or multiple colors you'll see this one is yellow yellow and blue uh, so you'll want to pay attention to those. In addition, each card is going to have abilities printed on it based on what level of your pyramid it's on. So for example, this one on level one, when played, will let you draw a card. On level two, we'll let you get uh, an attack, two gems, and two victory points. On level three, it's worth seven victory points. On level four, it's worth a five magic multiplier at the end of the game, making your magic worth stuff. So each of these cards is a ability set of some type, depending on where you play it. So you would make your decision at the beginning of the game as which one of these will form the base of your pyramid. You'll also take one of them and put it in your hand. And then the other two get discarded from the game, so they're going to be gone. Um, they may get shuffled into the small deck, but that's irrelevant. Just note that you're going to keep two of them. In addition, each player is going to have three of these law cards at the start of the game. These law cards are going to be end game possible victory points. It may be a little hard to see, so I'll read one of them. This one says Royal Favor. Put one free card from your pyramid underneath this card when you play it. Move all tokens, if any, from free card onto this card. A free card is one that's not held down by other cards. Uh, and then gain five, three victory points if this card is on level one, six if this card is on the second level, nine if it's on the third level, 12 if it's on the fourth level. Another one, for example, says Decree on Guilds. Put this card underneath any character card in your pyramid. For each token on this character, put another similar token on it. So it doubles tokens. Or a third one. At the end of the game, gain one extra victory point for each of your single color circles and infinite gemstones. You'll be trying to make, make single color circles, matching up the colors in the corners, uh, in order to get points at the end of the game. Finally, each player is going to start the game with two of every color gemstone and then two random gemstones that they'll get from the supply. Uh, these are the bonus gemstones. The actual gemstones uh, look like this. They're just cardboard gemstones. So these are a add-on that you can get, as is this player mat that I have here. Uh, and the card sleeves, of course. Uh, but Basically, each player will start with this type of stuff, and you will move on to the actual game. Each round of the game will start, uh, or potentially end, with cards flipping out to these four action or auction spots, I should say. Each auction spot being associated with a color, blue, red, green, or yellow. At the beginning of each round, there will be an auction phase, and each player is going to secretly choose one of their gems from behind their screen, uh, to bid for one of these four cards. There could be more cards, and you'll see later that those will come out, but basically you're bidding for a color that you want to take one of the cards from. Each player will then reveal their bids, and if they have bid a unique color, they will take the card associated with that area. If they have not, uh, if there are two cards there, which there could be, uh, and they can agree on who wants which card, they will each take their cards. Otherwise, if there is a matching bid, 
those players both lose their gems uh, and they'll go to a second round of auctions. In the second round of auctions, they will bid again. Uh, and if they tie again, they will again discard their gems. And there's a third round of auctions, repeat. Uh, after three rounds of auctions, if they can't agree or can't bid on different things, they will both pass. And passing will allow them to take three gemstones of their choice from the supply, plus extra gemstones for science, uh, that's these little gears, that they may have out in their pyramid at that point. Once you're done with that, obviously some of these cards would be gone and added to players' hands. Uh, we'll just say we're in a two-player game and these two cards were gone. We would move on to the actions phase, and each player is going to have the opportunity to build up to three cards from their hand. Uh, now, when you're building, uh, you're paying the costs associated with the card based on the level that you're building it on. So let's take, for example, this card right here. If I want to build it on the first level, uh, I would have to pay a blue. I would place it face down, uh, and each player simultaneously would reveal their card. And they get built in order of lowest number on the card. This one has a little 33 in the bottom corner. So if that was the lower number, I would build first. Uh, and I could place this out in my pyramid, noting that I'd like to match the circles if I can, but it's not imperative that I do so. Uh, so if I build this on the first level, it would cost me a blue gem, uh, and I would get three gems back from the supply. That's what that little three in gray means. I can't build it on the second level because I must build on top of two cards to build on a next level up. And you can build up to five levels. Alternatively, I could have built one of my uh, special cards here. They don't have a cost, uh, but they go out into your area uh, and they will score points based on their conditions out here. These are called law cards and you can get more throughout the game. Uh, but oftentimes they're again better on higher levels. In a future turn, if I wanted to build on a second level and I form, for example, a full circle here of the same color, uh, first it would cost me both a yellow and a blue to build this. Uh, second, I would get to draw a card. So I could either draw another character card from this small stack of cards or draw another law card, which is another potential way to earn victory points at the end of the game. Uh, finally, for forming this full circle, I get to take a gem of that color and add it to my supply, and that will be worth points at the end of the game as well. So finishing off these circles in one color is a good idea. You'll play three rounds of this, so you'll have a chance to play down three cards if you would like, or you may discard a card each time that comes around, or any time it comes around, to take two gems from the supply. The third option you have is to pass, do neither of those things, but you don't get any gems, and you can't play any cards for the rest of that round. Once everyone has done their three actions, or passed, or taken gems, you'll go back to the next auction phase. Any cards on the bottom of this area will move up to the top, and you'll flip out four more cards and these cards will become available for auction. And you'll continue on in this manner. So, what are the potential actions and what are all of these tokens? Uh, and how does the game end? Well, let's go over these tokens. Some of the cards, when you place them out, will give you victory point tokens that you place on those cards, and they're worth victory points at the end of the game. Some of the cards will give you gems. Obviously, we already know what gems do. Some cards will give you magic. You put that token right on the card. Uh, magic is worth nothing until the end of the game, at which point it might be worth something. Some will give you science, and science can also be worth points at the end of the game, but also gives you more gems if you pass during the auction. Some might give you defense. Defense can be worth points at the end of the game, uh, or defense can uh, protect you from attacks at the end of the game as well. So uh, attacks will let you either win an auction automatically and steal a card instead of bidding a gem, or at the end of the game they can be used to remove points from other players, and uh, that's a good thing. Finally, you have these larger tokens over here. Some of these will be bonuses for magic. So for example, this one here is a token that goes out on your card and says each magic is worth plus two at the end of the game. Some of them say plus three. It all depends on what your card tells you to put on there. Uh, but that's the only way magic is worth anything at the end of the game. Some of them will be bonuses for full circles of specific color. At the end of the game, circles of a specific color, if they're a full circle, will be worth points equal to the top of the circle, so in this case, two for this yellow. Uh, and then if we had a yellow bonus token, it would be plus four. Uh, and then some of the cards will give you infinite gems. Uh, an infinite gem is a, essentially a gem that you can use every turn to spend on something, but only once per turn. It's not a physical gem, but it just subtracts from the cost of building something. For example, if you had a yellow infinite gem, you could build this for just a blue. Uh, that is going to be worth point at the end of the game, equal to the level that it's on, plus any bonuses from these tokens right here. So, uh, there's a couple other things that are worth points at the end of the game, uh, but we already covered them. Points for your full circles, points for infinites, points for your law cards, just points that are out on the board. 
your magic equal to the multiplier. Any set of three tokens that is magic, defense, and science is worth 12 points. And then you, at the end of the game, look at the total attack and your total of defense, subtracting your defense from the attack. And you lose four points for every attack that you aren't able to block. And that is how you win the game, scoring the most points. One final thing to mention is each card will show four levels. There's actually five levels of the pyramid you could build on. When you build on the fifth level, you must pay every gem shown, plus a double of the top gem. When you do so, you'll either get 15 points, a 15 point token you can put out there, or you will get the first three rewards. So in this case, three gems, a tile, or a card I should say, and a magic token to put out. But in this effect, any player who's able to accumulate the most points by the end of 12 rounds, which is when this pile will run out, will be the winner. And there you have it, that is Viceroy from Mayday Games. Uh, now this is a game that I enjoy quite a bit. Uh, I've actually taken my time reviewing it because it was so heavily reviewed when it first came out. Uh, and so now hopefully a little bit later opinion of it. Uh, but this game is one that uh, has a lot of strategy in it based on several different things. First, uh, you have to effectively manage your gems. If you don't have the right gems for bidding, you can't get the cards that you want when they come out. If you don't have the right gems to play a card, you clearly can't play it and sometimes you'll have to make sacrifices on what you play where or you might want to make sacrifices on what you play where in order to effectively continue the game because if you don't play enough cards you're simply not going to win. Uh, that, uh, combined with the strategic placement of cards in particular areas, trying to form full gems uh, in order to get extra things, uh, and then in addition to that, of course, there are end game scoring points if you form full gems, uh, and the higher you can form those full gems on your pyramid, the better. But also, you have to take into consideration the position of the cards in the pyramid, because higher level cards are sometimes worth better things. So the higher you can place it, the better. When do you place it? Where do you place it? How do you place it? That's the question. That, combined with the fact that you have to figure out what your opponents are going to be bidding for, uh, what gems are they going to be spending, are you wasting gems by bidding at the same time for the same thing, uh, or can you get away with spending a gem on something um, in order to make them lose one? Sometimes that's a strategy. So there's a lot going on here, a lot of ways to score points, a lot of strategies to think about, uh, and overall a relatively simple game with some depth to it. So if that sounds good, check it out. That's Viceroy. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.